Hey guys, how's it going? This is ZR Spark. We are here today in Elite Dangerous on another shipbuilding guide. I'm here to bring to you the Mandalay. Uh, the ship has been a very interesting ship that has been released. Uh, it was first released as an exploration ship, but people have found out that it does a little bit more than that. And uh, I'm going to go over today my build for for combat. Uh, this leans heavily into PvP, but you can use it for PvE, and it is pretty modular with how you want to do it. You might just have to do some power management and some swapping around modules, but I'm going to go over today how I would build it and my thoughts on it. Uh, the Mandalay is a very accurate, or very accurate and very maneuverable ship. Um, you would think with the way the hardpoint placement is, it's not that good, but it's actually pretty phenomenal. I was very blown away um, by this thing's capability. Uh, for it being limited to what it has, it's astonishing in my opinion, guys. Uh, and the way it's set up is just phenomenal. It actually works out very well. Uh, and I'm not a very big fan of Zorgon Peterson ships, but this one, in my opinion, is pretty good. Um, it is a contender that I think will revolutionize the PvP arena, in my opinion. I've heard nothing but great things about it. I don't think it is as shield tanky as, say, a Python or a Mamba or an FDL. But I think it has the reserve banks and also just the maneuverability to keep it in the game, not to mention the agility. Um, this is a very agile ship that will just stay on target no matter what. Um, I don't think I ever stalled in this ship. It's even more agile than an Alliance Chieftain, and that's saying quite a bit. The Chieftain is known for being pretty agile, so this... So take my word for it, guys. This is pretty good. But let's go over... Uh, what we are doing with the Mandalay. For the hard points, for the mediums, I have went with Efficient 5 uh, PAs. With uh, It's up to you what you want to put on the mods. I put Dispersal and Target Lock Breaker so that your uh, dispersals for gimbaled weapons so that they can't keep uh, gimbaled MCs on you. Uh, frags might miss a little bit more and other weapons as such. Uh, the target lock breakers to uh, interrupt them if they're trying to hit you and trying to keep their aiming reticle on you. It might help uh, dis disrupt them on that front. And then my other two, I have put Thermal Conduit on. Uh, you see how the power plant I have up, despite it being the way it is, this ship has a very hard time getting hot. I have yet to cook myself in this ship with this setup, and that is saying a lot. So you might not want to put thermal conduit on, though if you're using the banks, you might be able to get toasty enough to be able to get some extra damage across. Uh, these PAs do about 67 damage, so you're looking about doing about a crate phantom. Uh, S damage, uh, but you do fire faster with them being medium, so you might be able to get a little bit more DPS down range with you being on target way more. Not to mention it is a grade 5 distro on this ship, so you are a little bit limited, but you might be able to get a couple salvos off. And then what's nice is we have two small rails, both with long range and feedback to hit shield cell banks. That are going off. Uh, what's nice about smalls is they only take two seconds to charge up, unlike 2.2 seconds for mediums. Though you are more than happy to um, change some stuff around and put medium rails on. Uh, you could also say put flechettes on this and run this as a flechette ship. Uh, you might just have to change around your power uh, things. Also, not sure why I have a power limited uh, notification going off in the background for the ship, but it'll be fine. But, yep, I am very happy with this. Um, I would not recommend frags on this as for medium frags or however you want to do your frag layout. It's not a lot of damage. I don't think this is a very good frag ship, though you can do whatever you want with it. Um, it would probably also make a pretty decent all-rail build. Um, it's just you have to work around the power situation, which we will go over here. I have reactive... Uh, lightweight 5 with deep plating. Uh, keeping this thing's speed up is very important. Uh, a top speed of 554 uh, is pretty good in my opinion. 
Uh, this is a very fast ship, uh, since it can jump pretty far, and I'll be doing an exploration build on this ship shortly as well. So you'll see why it has such good jump range and lightweight. It is not a very heavy ship, so I recommend do not ramming, or do not ram anything. Uh, the power plant, I had to overcharge it 5 with a monster. It does make it pretty vulnerable. But you can take out some of the shield cell banks that I have on here and put MRPs in if you want to feel more comfortable. And also put a shield booster in for taking out the heat sink. But we'll go over that here in a second. Uh, it does have, it does suck that it does have a five slot power plant. I really wish it had a six, but it is what it is, unfortunately, guys. Uh, it does have a 5A thruster with dirty drive tuning five with drag drives. Um, it does uh, mean it, it just, it, it flies very fast, and it has a pretty good boost interval, too. Uh, the 5A uh, distro makes it a little weird, but it actually kind of works really well. It kind of feels like you're still flying a ship with a 6A distro, uh, though I do wish it did have a 6A distro, but it is what it is, guys. And then um, all these new ships are SEO compatible, uh, so they have that super fast... Um, um, super cruise speed ability just by hitting your boost button very handy to have to catch up to people when you're trying to intercept them or get somewhere fast or run away uh, however you wish to do that it's very nice I went with fast boot so I can turn mine off while I have my weapons deployed with strip down so it's just super light uh, it's up to you how you want to do this some people might want to put um, where it has some more integrity it is up to you how you wish to do it um, I need to finish lightweighting the life support, but I do recommend lightweighting at the 5. Mine is at 3, but yep. Uh, 4D life support, uh, nice power saving, good weight. Uh, you shouldn't need any more than 7 minutes of oxygen. I think it's like 7 and a half minutes. Uh, but yep. Yeah. And then the 5A distro, I went with charged enhanced distributor, grade 5 with superconduct conduits. Pretty much the only thing good other than engine enhancement for exploration ships. So that's what I went with. Um, the distro, you have to be pretty good with the distro on this one. I would say this is mid to high difficulty distro usage. Um, it is definitely not a FDLs or a Chief or Alliance Ships Grade 6, and it's surely not a Crater Python's Grade 7 distro. Though it doesn't take much when firing the weapon and boosting. But as long as you're quick on the pips, I think you can handle it. But I do want to make that noted that the distro is grade 5. So it is kind of like flying a medium-small-esque ship. This is kind of how this ship is, in my opinion, directed towards. Though it still has close to medium to performance, um, in my opinion, in every aspect. It just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, but that's how I have it set up. And then my sensors are grade 3, but I do recommend getting them to grade 5. I actually just got the materials. High-grade emissions are amazing now, guys. I do recommend uh, checking them out. Uh, and then it does come stock with a 32-ton uh, uh, 5C fuel tank, though you can lower it down to a 4C if you want to save on some weight. Uh, it is quite a considerable amount of fuel, though, if you want to have that extra fuel, you can get to point A to point B without a problem. This ship has crazy jump rings just with um, uh, fast boot, uh, FSD, and strip down. I mean, I have almost over, over 31 light years jump range. This ship is insane for BGS and power play purposes, in my opinion. Um, it's very utilitarian. It can get you to one battlefield to an X without needing to stop to get gas like an FDL. Um, yeah, your 8-ton fuel tanks are rubbish in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, that is just me. For my utility mounts, I went with two of the Sirius heat sink launchers, so it has extra heat sinks. And then I have a heavy-duty shield booster with super capacitor. And then I have a thermal resistant shield booster grade 5 with supercapacitor. The heavy duty is also grade 5. And that is to help the shields. It doesn't have a lot of shields, but it is close to a thousand majors, which is pretty re reasonable. And if you want more, you can move the shield up to a grade 4, where one of the shield banks are. But I went with a grade 3. So it's your mileage may vary and how you want to use it. 
uh, but I did put a 3A prismatic shield generator on that. Getting prismatics now is going to be a little bit more tricky with them nerfing rares and having problems with power play 2.0. But we'll see what direction that goes, and that's a different topic for a different day, guys. Anyways, for our shield cell banks, we went with a 6A rapid cell 4 with flow. R5 is the same thing, R5 slot, uh, rapid 4 with flow control. And we have a rapid 4A with flow. And then we have another one that is rapid for flow. This will give you the ability to dual bank. I recommend pairing the six with a four and a five with a four and uh, banking that way so your shields can stay up in the battle. Uh, it does not pack a lot of armor, but it does have some. I would definitely recommend not relying on its armor. Though, as I said, you can pull one of the four A banks to put a hall reinforcement and a module reinforcement if you want to have a little bit more extra comfort. Um, but that is just how I have mine built. Um, I do have a 3D, uh, hull reinforcement on here, grade 5 with deep plating. And I also am packing two Guardian Shield reinforcement packages, a grade 2 and a grade 1, to add to the Mega Jewel stack of this shield. Um, the reason why I did this is because it carries quite a considerable amount of low slots. Uh, so I figured I would do something with the low slots. Yes, you could use the uh, lower slots as um, your extra armor, but I feel like you could just get more mega jewel value out of the armor, in my opinion. But I do have a 1D uh, hull reinforcement with thermal resistant hull uh, grade 5, and I need to put deep plating on that. But yep, that is the build, and I also do have a frame shift uh, drive interdictor. It's up to you what grade you want to get it to. I added it up to grade 2 because that's just what materials I had on hand. But you can get it up to grade 4 or 5. I think it goes up to grade 5 if I'm correct. But yep, that is my build of the Mandalay. Uh, it has been one of my favorite ships in recent time. Uh, not to say that the Python is a bad ship. Um, I think it's good. I just think it's a little limiting. But I do have a new build for that coming out soon as well. So stay tuned, guys. Uh, please let me know down below what you guys think of this Mandalay, and let me know what you guys have built for Mandalays too. I'm very curious to see what the community has done with this ship, exploration and combat-wise. Uh, I'll probably say stick to the combat-wise, what you're doing with this one in this video. In the next video, we'll talk the, about the exploration variant. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please leave a like and subscribe, and I hope to catch you on the next one. See y'all!